Well, welcome back to the Bigfoot Research Question video blog. This is for the 10th of December, uh, 2014, and I've got some questions to go through. Um, if you notice, I'm, I'm sticking pretty close to home right now, but I'll be gone next week. So there'll probably be no blogs during the week because I will have no access to the internet. But I'll try to make up for it when I get back. Um, yes, I'm going up north to check out how our Bigfoot friends are doing. Uh, and I'll probably be up there all week long. Anyway, uh, <clears throat> the questions we want to go through today are from G. Fadi says, Mitch, when you're out in the hot zone, do you smell the Bigfoot? Uh, as has been reported by many. Have you experienced headaches, confusion, or getting to an area or turning around and not finishing what you are doing to do some doing that some people claim the Bigfoot people can exert on researchers? Okay, um, yes, some of them smell. Not all of them. Um, I... It, you know, it really depends, uh, and and I think it has to do with their personal hygiene. Um, they maybe have been alone for quite some time, and therefore they have nobody to take care of or take care of them. However, when they are in the clan, now this is just theories, but whenever they're in the clan, then they can get personal grooming from the other members of the, the clan. And... Uh, so, you know, they may have to clean themselves up in order to, to be around the clan me members. Yes, I have smelled some pretty stinky ones. Uh, they've been, um, well, in fact, there's one of them that I call Mr. Stinky because he always stinks. I used to think that it was some kind of a scent gland that they could, uh, you know, excrete and uh, mark the territory and stuff like that. But... Uh, it does not appear so at this time. Now remember, these are my own opinions and based on what I've seen out in the in the field. So they are subject to change as I gain more data and more information. Okay, as far as getting sick, the only time that I have ever felt nauseated and dizzy and so forth was at the Sholo trailer. And that episode was so bad that we packed it up and headed into town for the hospital. But we got a couple of miles down the road, and all of a sudden I was all right. Uh, so we turned around and we came back. And I didn't get sick again. Um, now, I have no idea if this is Bigfoot related, because we don't know what's going on at the Sholo trailer. We've, we have found various evidences of multiple things going on that may or may not be Bigfoot related. So one by one, we're trying to eliminate those causes there at the trailer. Um, let's see, we go on to um, Linder69. He says, Mitch, do you happen to know what elevation is where you research? Also, have you any idea if the Sasquatch in your research area stay there year-round? Okay, uh, I don't research just one area. If you'll notice, I go to the Meat Eaters territory, and then I also go to the Hot Zone. But there's like three other places that I also go to. Um, some places I really don't identify too much. But... Um, there, basically, the elevations will run anywhere from 6,500 to about 8,500. And the unique thing about Arizona is it's only a couple of miles and you can drop down several thousand feet. So if they are up on top and they get a heavy snow and the move, game move off the top of the mountain, uh, of course, they're going to follow the food. So, uh, they don't migrate long distances like other people do say they do in other states because they really don't have to. So, uh, 
that's that's the thing however I would say that the areas that I'm re currently researching uh, are getting more and more crowded Arizona is going through a vast uh, preparation for the fire season they are thinning the forest taking up probably four out of five trees and cutting them down chipping them off for lumber uh, and I don't know if this is a plot to be able to mine the national for you know lumber the national forest or not but they are thinning the forests quite a bit and then there's the controlled burns they've been burning a whole lot uh, thinning again to thin out the forest to clean out the underbrush and so forth now this does not really affect the forest too much and some animals there's there's no problem with that you know like the elk and the deer and so forth they just move off and then come back when the grass starts growing but for the Bigfoot who need dense forests to hide in and to hunt in and so forth it greatly affects them however you can't can, you can't convince the Forest Service that there's a species that depends on heavy growth like that. Okay. Main Force Patrol, K7. What do you think about the theories of Bigfoot being a natural being, a supernatural being, and possibly a multi-dimensional being? Um, I can only speak from what uh, I have observed. Um what evidence is left behind and that kind of thing I have never run into any personally I've never run into anything that says they're multi-dimensional or that uh, there's there's anything above and beyond them being flesh and blood uh, I know they bleed I've seen them bleed um, so <laughs> as Arnold Schwarzenegger said on Predator if they bleed, we can kill them. Well, I'm not out to kill them, but the, the point is they are uh, flesh and blood. They are a mortal being. So that's, again, my opinion. Uh, if I ever do run across a dimensional portal or time portal or something like that, then, yeah, I'll change my mind. But right now, no, I, I don't see any evidence of that. Uh, cloaking, I do think they are very good at camouflage. Uh, they blend right into the natural surroundings and they can look like stumps and stuff like that. But do they actually cloak electronically or visually or bend light? I don't know. Uh, it would seem that you have to have some kind of device that will do that for you that you can't do it mentally um, the only exceptions to that would be of course that would be the supernatural or spiritual things in nature where the the Bigfoot might be able to pass back and forth that direction but I don't think so I think they die so I think they're pretty much mortal okay last question comes from uh, Bev Combs. Do you think the ones with the red eyes are more aggressive? I have read stories from the Indians saying the red eye ones will eat you. Well, fortunately, I've not run across any red-eyed one yet. Um, so, you know, I can't really say yes or no. However, I do know that in legend and lore, uh, the beginnings of the legend of lore is usually based on some kind of truth, some little sliver of truth. So, you know, take it for what it's worth. Uh, fortunately, I haven't been eaten yet. <laughs> I'm still here. Um, <clears throat> so far, uh, all of the eye shine and so forth has been related to the color of light uh, frequency that's been hitting their eyes. Um, you know reflecting back in their eyes most of it's been white so uh, there's been some that have a little bit of a green tinge to them and so forth 
but then again that could be the frequency of light from either the flashlight or the source so that's what I got going there um, that's it for today uh, we'll do it again tomorrow uh, keep sending your questions and I'll answer them the best I can thanks bye